Welcome to Flute Tube. It is a snowy day outside, so it's a good day to stay inside with a good book. We're going to talk about The Inner Game of Music today by Barry Green with Timothy Galway. You might remember that back in the summer, I did an episode on The Inner Game of Tennis by Tim Galway, and this is a follow-up book. And I still think if you have not read The Inner Game of Tennis, if you can, this is a good place to start and read this first because it contains really the nuts and bolts of the ideas of Tim Galway's inner game. But today we're going to do the inner game of music exclusively. And as you can see, it's a bit bigger and thicker. So there are a lot of ideas in here and we're going to talk fast and get through it. After Tim Galway wrote The Inner Game of Tennis, there came to be quite a series of these books applying the inner game to different fields. And The Inner Game of Music was the first written that was outside of the area of sports. And there's a good reason for that, that the psychology of playing sports and music is very similar. The primary discovery of the inner game is that we as humans are constantly getting in our own way. So the idea behind the inner game is to help keep us from doing that, keep our human tendencies of self-sabotage at bay and help us to reach our full potential. Barry Green talked to Tim Galway about doing this and, and was really excited about it. And Tim Galway said, that's great. Just be sure that you're not rehashing what I already did. Take some time to apply it to music so that they become really fresh ideas completely intended for musicians. So Barry Green spent about three years living with these ideas and mulling them over and putting his thoughts into practice as a musician before he began to write this book. Barry Green's goal writing this book is to help us recapture our childlike, spontaneous, non-judgmental, non-critical approach to music that we had as small children, when it was something that was spontaneous and joyful and that we did not regard as difficult. The big point and breakthrough of the inner game idea and series of books is that we as human beings are constantly thinking about the outer game that we play, what our achievements look like, what our interactions with other people look like, but there is an equally important and often completely unacknowledged inner game that we always have to play. The outer game deals with outside obstacles, the inner game deals with things like self-doubt and fear versus confidence and the ability to tap into our potential, be spontaneous and trust ourselves. If we think we're only playing the outer game and there's no inner game to deal with, the game ends up playing the person rather than the other way around. And the inner game is the only game that can and should be applied to all games. Barry Green divides this book into five parts. I'll list them in this video description so that you kind of have a roadmap of what we're doing. You'll see them in the video as well. So let's get right to the first part. I would say the most important basic idea of this book is right here at the beginning. And it's something that Barry Green calls the performance equation. It's right here and it's very simple. It's uppercase P equals lowercase p minus i. The uppercase p is performance. The lowercase p is potential. And i is interference. So your performance is whatever potential you have minus whatever interference may be there. Now, interference can come from outside of yourself, but the point of the inner game is to focus on interference we may be causing ourselves, like being extremely self-critical, experiencing anxiety or self-doubt. And the goal of the inner game is to let these things go so that you can trust yourself, you can have that feeling of being caught up in the moment, and you can fully express your potential. Your potential is a lot of things. It's your innate potential as a musician and as a human being, but it's also things like how much you've practiced, what you've learned about the music, the years of experience that you have behind you already, all those kinds of things are what we want to gain access to and get rid of the interference that often stands in our way. In Tim Galway's book, The Inner Game of Tennis, we ran into this very important idea of two selves. There's the self that's talking and instructing and the self that is actually doing. We run into this idea again in Barry Green's book, but he reframes it a bit. He says that self one is the talker, the self-critic, the thing that's chattering at us and distracting us. And self two is the doer, which means self one 
is interference and self two is your potential. So in this equation of performance equals potential minus interference, our goal is to get rid of as much self one, which is interference, as possible and rely on self two, which is our potential to really perform. If we feel completely caught up in the moment, like we can spontaneously make music, self two has taken over. If we feel paralyzed by anxiety, that's self one stepping in, trying too hard to control everything that we do. Now that we've talked about self one and self two, we're ready to get to the master skill of the inner game, which is entering a state of relaxed concentration. You want to feel alert, relaxed, responsive, and focused. This is the big goal of the inner game. We also need to be aware that we achieve both inner and outer results. We achieve the results that the people around us see and judge, but the inner results are equally important. How do we feel while we're doing it? If we feel miserable inside, then we want to improve our inner game. And if we're enjoying ourselves, it also frees up our energies to be more relaxed and spontaneous and become better musicians. Now let's talk about three of the most fundamental skills of the inner game. These most fundamental skills that are discussed in the book are awareness, will, and trust. Awareness is the first inner game skill and it is the most fundamental. One important thing about it is having no filter of judgment, simply being aware and open and noticing your own experiences. You want to accept distractions, but choose to put your attention elsewhere. Put your attention on your performance and filter out distractions. Have a focus for your awareness rather than trying to be aware of everything. Decide what you're going to channel into your awareness and what you're going to choose to ignore. Awareness is the present. It's not the past or the future. You want to learn to choose a focus to help with awareness that will tie you to the present. It may be something visual, it may be sound, it may be feelings, it may be our knowledge. Awareness is an antidote to trying because we want to stop trying so hard. We just want to be aware and accept the experience that we're having. Sometimes awareness itself will instantly fix a problem. If you become aware of a problem, you can simply direct your attention to it and your awareness will help you fix it very quickly. Sometimes it gives us room to tolerate a problem. For instance, if you have sweaty hands and this is causing you a lot of anxiety, you can choose to accept the sweaty hands. Just know that's going to happen and accept that it will happen. And sometimes that acceptance in itself can end up solving the problem. You realize that you can live with it and deal with it and then it goes away. Also, awareness can help us to realize that often there's a problem behind the problem. For instance, if you can never get enough air, if you increase your awareness, you may realize that it's because of your posture and that if you fix the posture problem, suddenly you can breathe as you need to in order to play well. The next inner game skill that we're going to talk about is will. Will gradually shapes your performances closer and closer to what your ideal is, which implies that you need to have goals. So really that's what Will is all about in this book is formulating goals, both short-term and long-term goals that will help you to reach what you really want to be as a musician. And Barry Green has another visual for us, this triangle. This is the P-E-L triangle, which is made out of performance experience and learning. All of this fits under Will and he describes what he means by each of these goals. The performance goal is the technical aspects of music. Experience is how you feel while you're doing it, and it also means merging into the music completely because we do ultimately want that sense of just letting go and trusting the music. The learning goal is solving problems while you're learning music, but the learning goal also falls into all kinds of realms within and outside of music. It could mean learning pieces, it could mean learning how to improve your concentration, or deal with your fear of failure. It could mean learning facts about the music that you're playing. You should let your focus shift between all of these goals. That's why he put them as a triangle. You don't have to handle them all at once. And he says that you'll find that they will dovetail with each other. Your biggest goal that should come out of this triangle is to transmit an experience of music. We want to hear what's behind all of that technique that you've been working on. When we're uncertain of our goals, 
it's hard to bring our will to bear on them and our concentration will wander. We also need both long-term goals and specific short-term goals, what we want to accomplish in each practice session in order to keep moving towards our ideal as a musician. Trust is the third inner game skill. We need this to tap into our own inner resources. It's not blind trust, but it's developed from your own hard work and knowing that there is music inside of you. We can't achieve a state of relaxed concentration and become one with the music if we don't trust ourselves. You need to discover the barriers that you have to your trust so that you can overcome them. They include your self-image and fears about what other people will think of you, things outside of your control and fears about your own ability. He talks about ways that you can get past your self-image problems. One is that you can think of becoming the music, you're not yourself, so that you eliminate the self. To overcome self-doubt, you need to learn to trust yourself, or rather we're talking about learning to trust self too. The feeling of risk that comes when you're letting go and kind of merging with the music can be a good sign that you're allowing self too to take over. And self too deserves to be trusted. Self too proves over and over again that it is a better musician than self one. He includes a whole chapter on the idea that we need to let go, and he talks about various techniques that can help you let go. Some of those techniques he talks about are role-playing, pretend that you're somebody else that's famous and successful, let the body take over, rather than asking your brain, what am I supposed to do? Ask your fingers, fingers, what am I supposed to do? He talks about letting go to aspects of the environment. Is there something in your environment that reflects qualities of the music? He's talking about your specific environment, but sometimes I think of just the environment at large. You can think about a brook or the sun or a food with a certain texture or taste. Did you know there's this thing that exists that's called a tangelo? It's supposed to be tangy like grapefruit and sweet like a mandarin. These three skills of the inner game that we've been talking about, developing awareness, will, which is like goals and trust, if you develop these three skills, they are what should lead you to the ultimate goal of the inner game, which, if you remember what I said, is finding a state of relaxed concentration when you play, and especially when you perform. And we've got another visual, one more triangle from Barry Green. So you can think of these three things contributing to a state of relaxed concentration. Once you feel really acquainted with these ideas of the inner game, the goals and the skills that are going to help you achieve the ultimate goal of relaxed concentration. Barry Green goes on to a section of the book that's intended to apply these skills to your musical experience. You want to improve the quality of your musical experience all the time. This is about valuing your time. You should always be looking for ways to improve your practice time and your performance experience so that you're not wasting any of the valuable, limited, precious moments that you have in this life. He includes a chapter on teaching and learning, and it focuses on letting the body teach the body. The body is what is going to do. So we want to learn from the part of ourselves that will actually be doing the job. And he makes the point that you can learn a lot more from your various experiences than from a list of instructions that your teacher just feeds to you. He suggests that teachers encourage students to develop an awareness of what's happening, what feels right, what's working. We should have students notice actively how things look, feel, sound, when they're working and when they're not working. The next section that we get into in this book is developing skills in the area of listening to music. There is a chapter on the inner game listener, and this is intended for everyone. You could be a musician and benefit from this, or you could be just interested in music and benefit from how he suggests that you listen to music. He talks about giving the music full awareness and attention, learning about the music in advance of hearing it so that your experience will be better, finding meaning behind the music from your own experience, in your own terms, not being told what you're supposed to experience. He wants you to trust your ability to listen, to avoid both external and internal distractions. He wants you to use awareness techniques and focus your attention in specific places, 
like what you are seeing, hearing, feeling, what you know about music, so that you're focused on that rather than perhaps some feelings of self-doubt about what you can absorb or if you're appreciating the music correctly or perhaps the child chewing gum right behind you. There's also a chapter for those who are parents or coaches. And one of the biggest points of this chapter is to be sure that you make non-judgmental statements. You don't want the child or the student to feel that the purpose of playing is to gain approval. You want to acknowledge their growth and then ask the student or the child what they feel that they have accomplished. You want to help them experience week by week progress as well as longer term progress. And another important point in the book is to emphasize musical cooperation with peers rather than emphasizing musical competition. Making music should remain as fun and humor filled and spontaneous as possible. There's also a chapter on integration and balance. Very appropriately, he quotes conductor George Sell, who said, think with the heart and feel with the brain, which is obviously a very integrated way to approach music. We want our technique and our expression to be integrated and balanced. So if you favor one of these areas over the other, you want to try to shift and develop that weaker part of your personality in order to become a more rounded musician. There's also an emphasis in this chapter to stay creative, not just become mechanical and a kind of technique machine, which unfortunately can happen to musicians, especially as the years go by and there's more and more pressure to be perfect. In this section of the book, there's another chapter on ensemble playing. He talks about the need to have goal clarity, will skills, when you're playing as a part of a larger group of musicians. He talks about how as a double bassist, he could get very bored in rehearsals because they often don't do that much. And so he learned how to develop a greater awareness, to develop more of an ability to listen to the people around him playing in other sections. He also talked about how much you need to trust yourself, your colleagues, and the conductor. He makes the point, which I think is very interesting, that in the case of the orchestra, sometimes self one can be like the conductor, kind of the head of the body, and self two is the orchestra. And that as with other self one and self two situations, self one needs to trust self two. So rather than the conductor giving too many, do this, do this, try this, you're wrong, you're right kinds of instructions, the conductor should help the orchestra to play more intuitively and instinctively. The final section is on improvisation and creativity and expanding your inner potential. I think this is a very good chapter for musicians to read because we do tend to get so wrapped up in being perfect. Being a musician should be about creativity and expressing yourself. Obviously improvisation demands that you let go of self one and trust self two. And if you're foggy on how to let yourself try to do this, how do you let yourself try to improvise? How do you begin the process of composition if you've never done that? Again, he gives a lot of great ideas and exercises to do in the book. Barry Green ends this entire book with a quote by Mozart, and I can't imagine anything more appropriate, because you can tell from the quote that Mozart was an absolute shining star of the inner game. Not only did he accomplish his outward goal of writing beautiful music, but he found a real inner joy and delight in what he was doing. And there's no question that he reached this state of relaxed concentration that is the goal of the inner game. I'm going to read this quote to you now, of course, in English. Provided I am not disturbed, my subject enlarges itself, becomes methodized and designed, and the whole, though it be long, stands almost complete and finished in my mind so that I can survey it like a fine picture or a beautiful statue at a glance. Nor do I hear in my imagination the parts successively, but I hear them, as it were, all at once. What a delight this is, I cannot tell.